beautiful doctor. <laughs> oh, the sun, sir, is awful bad. Come quickly, sir. What ails your son, old woman? Some around here calls it the French disease. <laughs> Make ready, old mother. I'm coming. Oh. Drink a little of this. It's good for you. <coughs> he, he was a glass blower, sir, an apprentice. His master craftsman come from Genoa, sir, and he taught my son how to blow glass. But I always thought he was an unhealthy man. I told the boy not to use the same blowpipe as the old ones use. But he wouldn't listen, and he gets this horrible sore. Where is the sore, old mother? In the corner of his mouth, Doctor. But it's no good looking now. It's gone, sire. Our own doctor cured it. But then, a few weeks later, he gets this horrible rash, which turned to sores. All over his back, Doctor, sir. All weeping they was. Oh. And uh, he has lost weight, something shocking. Quite wasted away. Sometimes, sir, he can't breathe, sir. And sometimes, sir, he can't uh, pass his water. Take this down, Operinus. A rare case of the French malady. The malignant form. The skin rash ulcerates and gives out a blood-stained pus. The ulcers dry to form a brown crust, like limpid shells. The kidneys are affected, injured. The lungs are affected. General condition. Emaciated, dehydrated. Microcosmic doses of mercury administered. Don't worry. Don't worry, my son. Do everything I tell you, and you'll be all right. We are very fortunate, old woman. Lucky you came to me at the right time. He is only in the second stage of the disease. He will survive. But you must listen to me. He needs very careful nursing. Now, you must apply the balsam as I instruct you. Give him lots of fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. Call that the fee, Operinus. You drive a hard bargain. Come, let me give you a hand. Late in November of the year of our Lord, 1529, Operinus and I approached the city of Nuremberg with its graceful spires and bustling ramparts. Here I would be able to publish my treatise on syphilis. 
Everywhere, the disease had taken hold of the population. My treatment of the disease with mercury was gaining ground. I had invitations to demonstrate its effectiveness from several cities. And I was sure the Nuremberg Guild of Medicine would accept me as a physician, with no questions asked. Take mercury and sublimate it seven times. Add an equal weight of the purest flour of wheat, pound them together and saturate in a little pure water. Master, this method needs a heading. Then call it a recipe for converting mercury, a safe prescription for syphilis. You mean the French disease? Don't bother me with social niceties. It is syphilis. And the stench of it is the same to my nostrils, be it Frenchman, German, Pope or peasant. Well, this book will certainly cause a stench. From Nuremberg here to Leipzig, I warrant you. <laughs> if you can get it printed. The authorities in Colmar were quick enough to refuse you a permit to publish. Well, I will publish it. It will be printed underground if necessary. Well, that's the best place to put a stench. I would even dedicate it to the aldermen of the city, or at least to one of their secretaries. Place the vessel on a slow fire until the moisture evaporates. Doctor! The venerable doctor is busy. He cannot see you now. Oh, let them in, Operinus. Put him on the table. What's his name? Newman the Fletcher. But this is not from his doctor. I must have a referring note from the doctor. Master, the doctor is out of town and the Fletcher is dying. See how drawn he is. He cannot keep anything in. He's been fumed and purged many times with guayac. Operinus, hand me Aesop. Will those damned meddlers who call themselves doctors never learn? A wood from the guayac tree. My God. Guayac. It comes from the Indies, so now they treat so-called Indian diseases with it. The Indians use it to fumigate their houses, so now our medical wise men suffocate their patients with its biting vapours. Ten years ago, they started treating ulcers with it. Now it's everything they treat from backache to syphilis, and none of it works. We will keep him here for the night. Alpurnus, take him to the upstairs bedroom. These pellets can awaken the dead. Our Nuremberg doctors call my elixir here the excrement of mice. These bitter crystals of poppy that I have distilled for myself will dispel the pain of the Fletcher's bowel infection, give him the rest and the sleep he needs. Tomorrow he will awaken refreshed. The day after he'll be mended. Now, before you take him away, mark well what I say. Make sure that each day he is fed with everything he wants. Now, forbid him nothing. He needs food and drink as much as he needs rest and quiet. And no more quiet. Gracious doctor. I heard of your kindness and skill from my brother. He travelled as a pilgrim through your native town, Eindeselm, and stopped at the hospice near the shrine of the Black Madonna there. He commended you to me. Sire, may I give you a warning? There will be much trouble afoot for you if you begin to bestir the Lutherans in this city. They will get at you through the medical guild. No 
are also inflamed by your works. They mean you ill. Thank you. I fear them not. They're impostors all, and they hide behind their gills and their gowns. A pox on them. I'll be leaving to the inn, sir. Bring the chicken in here, Operinus. Do you want the chicken alive? Yes. <laughs> Give me the chicken. I'm going to show you something that will amaze you, Operinus. First, I'll put the chicken to sleep through the power of suggestion. lost to this world, see? Uh, here. Now watch this. My chemistry will do the same thing with the help of fumes. Now, give me the bird. The chicken will not be harmed. Master, what is in that bottle? It is oil of vitriol and alcohol. It is very difficult to make. Mm. That is amazing. You could use that on patients racked with pain. I have. Many times. For childbirth and also for amputations on the battlefield. Someday I'll show you how to make it. Our city has been honoured by many esteemed visitors this last year. Politicians and religious reformers, mainly. But I can't recall anyone quite so distinguished in banking as yourself, Herr Fugger. Unusual business. It must be, as I recall, it was your deputy who came here two years ago to negotiate the loan for our sewers. We are honoured that the Emperor's bankers should bless our city spires. <laughs> How can I be of service to you? I have a very delicate matter to discuss. It concerns a citizen of yours. His name is Theophrastus von Hohenheim. Hohenheim. Yes, you mean Paracelsus. He's better known by his Latin name, Paracelsus. Yes, I know him. Controversial figure. Did you know that um, Sebastian Frank has just mentioned him in his chronicle? Here it is. Dr. Theophrastus von Hohenheim, a physician and astronomer, came to our town in 1529, a peculiar and wondrous man. He laughs at the doctors and scribes of the medical faculty. They say he burned Avicenna at the University of Baal. He uses his own judicial physics and has contrarieties with many. His practice is against all, and he is another Lucian, so to speak. Some say he's a troublesome fellow. He's given support to various radicals here. I don't understand him. He's a Catholic, yet he attacks the Pope. Even suggests that he has the French disease. Yes, yes, but I am not concerned with his religious misdemeanors. The whole world seems to be in religious dispute right now. I am concerned with this doctor's medicine and surgery. He has recently published two pamphlets on the French disease. You do call it the French disease. I mean, of course, syphilis. Can get a little confusing. I was in France only last month. <laughs> and there I heard them call it the Englishman's disease. <laughs> they really have taken their defeat at Calais badly. And what say the English on this matter? The English blame the Spanish. Naturally. The English say it was the Spanish soldiers that brought it back from the West Indies with them. And no doubt the Spanish blame the Dutch. Wrong. They blame the Neapolitans. And they call it the Neapolitan disease. <laughs>
There you are. Prognostications for 1530. Your book is impressive and it sells well. This is the third edition and the thinking public likes it. It could run to ten printings. We could have better sales in Nuremberg, Paracelsus. But you have offended the medical community here deeply. They deserve it. Yes, but you should show some tact. They should show some tact. They call me charlatan in the streets. They set every apothecary and barber against me. They carp and they sneer. They know too well that I have healed 15 princes. That I carry degrees in both medicine and surgery. But yet they still will not admit me to their ranks. Yes, yes, yes. They should know better, but they do not. Yet, Paracelsus, you have friends, even among them. You must not alienate those who are devoted to your propositions. Oh? Who do you mean? <sighs> I mean, for instance, the, the local humanists, members of the medical guild. They love you not only for your medicine and surgery, but think of you as a poet. Herr Papers, may I send your apprentice to the apothecary? I'm in need of a balsam. Oh, by, by all means. Uh, Frederick, uh, attend to the good doctor's needs. His works have incensed the majority of doctors here in Nuremberg, and I have it on good authority that he has offended even the Leipzig Faculty of Medicine. Leipzig is 50 leagues from Nuremberg. Even so, the venerable dean of the medical faculty of Leipzig, Dr. Stromer, is deeply upset by your publications on the French disease. Not our publications. No, but, but they are seen to be that or a failure on the part of your senses to do their job properly. Dr. Stromer says that the treatise is rubbish and that von Hohenheim is not qualified. Well, there are many doctors here who would say otherwise. He qualified as a physician at Ferrara University. He practiced as army surgeon in Italy. He was accepted as professor at Bar University four years ago. He was the city's physician. All these things were established when the Court of Censors considered his treatise on syphilis for publication. My friend Lazarus Spengler, the censor of Nuremberg, had nothing but good to say about his work. Be that as it may, you must bar all future publications. We cannot allow ruin to come to those who in good faith have invested in Guayac. Who include, of course, the venerable dean of Leipzig Medical Faculty. Now we're alone here, Papers. The second and third chapters of the French malady. <laughs> How do you do it? Night and day in the saddle, patients knocking at your door. B -b the, the prognostications of a, a torrent of manuscript. <laughs> now this. I was born with Venus in Aquarius. That's the torrent of writings for you in astrological terms. <laughs> but my dear papers, you must prepare this treatise for printing in absolute secrecy. I have enemies everywhere, and my works could very easily be banned. Oh, but the censor was fair and just when we published uh, the first chapter. Uh, why, the sale of Mercury has tripled in this city alone, I believe, since, since publication date. Quite so, quite so. We must tread carefully. Oh, we have no need to take chances. The text will be set up here after hours. Frederick is trustworthy, if a little careless. <laughs> Uh, another quarto edition, I think. You will note that I have dedicated this edition to Lazarus Spengler, secretary to the alderman, and the city censor. Oh, good heavens, did you ask his permission? No, but it is an honour for him. Oh. I dedicate all my writings to honourable people. Why should he complain? Because it will smack of collusion. The alderman will think that we have got at their censor. Let them think what they wish. My works are not heretical, nor are they religiously offensive. But they are medical heresy. But we must publish, come what may. Now, we agree it is to be an underground edition. 
the Fuggers of Augsburg might be prepared to endow the city of Nuremberg with uh, a new hospital for sufferers of syphilis. If the corporation could be persuaded to cooperate in this matter, and no doubt guayac would be the drug of choice at such a hospice. No matter. I will see what I can do. But it will be difficult. Very difficult. One more point. My good friend Dr. Stromer is already in contact with your medical guild. I understand that they have challenged the arrogant Dr. Hernheim to a debate. Indeed they have. He refused. This lion has a faint heart. Not so. He countered by asking the doctors to refer one of their incurable patients to him for treatment. Preferably a syphilitic. Good! Why not ask Paracelsus to take over the whole infirmary? I think it highly unlikely that he will cure anybody, and that will discredit him utterly. Maybe. They are in a desperate plight, and our medical guild is quite impotent. A hospital, Burgomaster. You do need a hospital. I will get the medical guild to take steps immediately. And I will consult our architects. We have vast stocks of stone suitable for a hospital. What a good idea. Yes, yes. I think we are agreed as to what is to be done here. I'm to luncheon with the city armorers. Their needs are insatiable. I'll see what I can do, Herr Fugger. What if the house of Fugger supplied the hospital and Paracelsus the expertise? Come in, Oprinus. The doctor's in the printing shop. Fair papers. Master, a messenger came to our rooms in haste from the Nuremberg Guild of Medicine. What are they up to now? They had my offer to cure one of their syphilitics, to demonstrate the advantage of mercury over guayac. They have had that and more. They've had a visit from the mayor and some of his aldermen. The whole guild is in an uproar. The mayor? The mayor and four aldermen. I hear they all went into conference and then sent for you. I have no quarrel with the mayor, and his censor has been very kind. What is it they're offering? That's all right. They've asked you to take over the 15 patients suffering from the French malady at the Nuremberg Hospice. Don't do it, Master. Fifteen, you say? Hmm. I will select ten and treat them. I do not have the Materia Medica to nurse any more. But this is madness. They mean to undo you. You cannot succeed. And if you fail, they will hound you from the city. They will hound me anyway. Well, if you accept, you are to meet the Guild at the hospice tomorrow afternoon. I do accept. And I shall see their patients this very afternoon. By tomorrow, I shall know what state they're in and what their chances of a cure are. Poor devils. I heard their wails as I passed the hospice on my way to the city. Yeah, papers. My dear papers, please send proofs of our new work on syphilis to me each night at the hospice as they come off the press and in great secrecy. I think we can trust Friedrich to do that mission for us. I will, good doctor. Fare you well. Your mission is perilous. 
And I have your assurance that, come what may, this second edition of the Syphilis book will go into print. In an underground edition, if necessary? You have that assurance. The only difficulty is time. I need time. How long? How about a month? I will buy you that length of time. But how will you do that? They could censor you at any moment. Oh, no, they will not censor me. Not while I'm treating their patients at the hospice. <laughs> I see. <laughs> they expect me to fail. If I do, they will set their dogs on me. Farewell. And remember, the underground edition. You have one month, my friend. Then began the hardest period of my life as a doctor. The treatment of the ten lepers. They were called lepers because they were both contagious and incurable. All were in an advanced stage of syphilis. It was no help having a team of invigilating physicians pestering me. Young doctors with their sour comments, attempting to keep the stench of the disease at arm's length. Despite the malignancy of the symptoms, I pressed on with my mercury remedy. Perhaps he intends to operate. Some of those wounds are quite black. No, they say he never cuts unless he's forced to. I think he's just lazy. No, oh, negligence. And now stripping bandages off. Why, only last week I was here on duty and those bandages were clean off. Gentlemen, gentlemen. I must ask you to curb your outburst in front of these unfortunates. Dr. von Hohenheim is in complete control here by your agreement. I will suggest that we meet here in one month's time in order to review the effectiveness of his treatments and so the validity of his claims. Most impressive of what I've seen. Quite an astounding recovery. And in such a short time. I think so. Well, gentlemen, colleagues, we have reached our conclusions. Of course, you must understand that our findings must pass through official channels. But at this stage, we have concluded that in nine of your ten patients, there has been a significant change. We have written our conclusions on the case histories of the patients, and the patients can immediately be discharged. The head of our guild wishes you to report to the Burgomaster's office on Friday at 3 o'clock, when you will be notified of our guild's decision regarding your application for membership. Thank you. In the meantime, we will represent your most informative case histories 
in conjunction with our findings, to the guild master and his board. I must say, von Hohenheim, though you seem to drag your heels, you have produced remarkable results. Did you really need four weeks to prove the efficacy of the mercury? Your latest publication seemed to indicate a more rapid reaction. The patients were in very poor condition, quite emaciated. I take it you will safeguard these case histories with utmost caution. They contain much interesting information which supports the mercury method. Indeed I shall. Thank you. Farewell, gentlemen. Goodbye. The most remarkable out of all the ten. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a look at the urine. I think you'll find it free of any impurities. Lazarus, come in. Come in and sit by the fire. What's troubling you? Paracelsus, much misunderstood. I'm being placed under very great pressure. Go on. Well, his genius is disruptive. That, my dear Lazarus, is the purpose of genius. If only we understood that. A Herr Fugger, I fear, may never understand that. Herr Fugger is in the surveyor's office now, ordering him about. He has just ordered me to ban all Paracelsus publications. And he's going to come in here to ask you to instruct the magistrates to issue an order to that effect. Well, I'm not likely to do that. Excellent. I am also here to protest at the manipulation of my office. I see. Let me get you some wine. Burgermaster, Herr Fugger's on his way. The Burgermaster, you just leave the matter in your hands. Here they are, my dear Burgermaster. The plans for the new... Herr Fugger, you know Lazarus Spengler. He acted as my deputy at the hospice. If you'll excuse me, gentlemen. I have some disquieting news for you, Herr Fugger. The plans for the new hospital. What news? You have news of my West Indies fleet? It is overdue. It has been sunk. No. It's to do with Paracelsus. He has just cured nine of our syphilis patients with mercury. Here are the case histories. You must be mistaken. The medical guild would never allow it. Nine healed with mercury. I must remind you, Herr Fugger, that I am mayor of the city. And I have one or two things I would like to discuss with you, including tampering with our sensor. Please. Be careful what you say, Burgermaster. We own a fair slice of this city. I have here a letter from the Leipzig University Faculty of Medicine. It orders your guild of doctors to disown Paracelsus. Half of the guild members are graduates of Leipzig. They will not disobey. There is an enclosure for your censor. It strongly condemns Paracelsus's methods as outlined in the second manuscript he wants to print on syphilis. Fugger, I cannot prevent your attacks on this doctor, whose only crime seems to be that he cures his syphilitic patients with mercury, whereas you are Europe's agents for this drug, Guayac, which is singularly ineffectual against the French malady. Now, I personally happen to agree that Nuremberg will never be large enough to house both Paracelsus with his brilliance and our medical guild with its intransigence. And I also gratefully accept your splendid new hospital, which we desperately need. But you will not come into this corporation's offices to do your will as you wish it, ordering our censor out of peak to ban somebody's books 
or our surveyors to use your bricks and mortar, or our medical guild to dispense your medicines. I must regretfully allow his books to be banned, or this city will know no peace. I will allow his character and his genius to be discredited. I will do this because I know this city is not worthy of him, and it will be in his best interests to move on. From you, I expect a written guarantee that this hospital will be erected immediately and a pledge of the necessary funds for it. I also require of you that you will never interfere in this city's business again, directly or indirectly, especially in the running of our city's hospitals. How can I be sure that you will not allow this upstart, this quack, to reap the benefits from these so-called cures he has performed in your hospice, which he has so maliciously recorded in these case histories? Because I will burn them here and now. Look through them, Hedfogger. They spell the doom of Guayac. Burn them. You can have your hospital. First, you will sign this document which I've had prepared. It lays out clearly your undertaking to provide Nuremberg with a hospital. It is very fair has been drawn up by our city's lawyers. I will sign it. Paracelsus, I hope you'll accept this from the city. It is your just fee. Burgermaster, I contracted for no fee. I was to treat these patients to prove my standing as a doctor of both medicines, that I might be accepted into your medical guild here. I am weary of travel. I have research to do, books to write. I wish to settle here. I appreciate that. Unfortunately, the successes you have had with your mercury treatment have not cured our doctors of their intransigence. You mean in spite of these cures, they will not accept me? I'm afraid not. They still have their doubts. And even my own stern advice to weigh these doubts has been ignored. But it was implicit in the arrangement. I would heal a syphilitic patient, and they would accept this as a proof of my competency. That is so. And you have healed nine. And the case histories with their comments prove it. You do have the case histories here. These case histories have disappeared. The information in those records, the details of the dosages of mercury administered, the nursing instructions, they are irreplaceable. The medical guild received them two days ago. Well, surely there are other records. Books. Books? Universities? Professors? Life, Herr Burgermaster. Only life, with its realities, even with its sicknesses, can impart true knowledge. Your doctors are dotes and fools. Their guild is a ship of fools. Come, come, Paracelsus. You cannot talk like this, here or anywhere. They haven't heard the last of me yet. You mean the further chapters in syphilis, which you are waiting to be cleared with a censor? Just so. Do you know what this envelope contains? How should I? It contains a letter which condemns outright the very text which you have submitted for censorship. That is infamous. This is the work of those numbskulls in Leipzig. They have taken exception to some parts of your book. I tell you, 
but down on my chin knows more than they do. I want to help you. I've had your cures recorded in the city archives for all to see. There is nothing else I can do. I have to order the censor to ban all your publications. I can delay that order. Even now, the press is on the last sheets of an underground edition. I suspect it as much. Your underground edition is being printed by Friedrich Papus. Hmm? I can give you five days before the ban is enforced. You have been very kind, Burgomaster. And I am going to give you some good advice. Do not discharge those nine patients permanently. Make sure that they, and all your syphilitic patients, now and in the future, yes, and even in your new hospital, are regularly dosed with refined mercury to the end of their days. Mercury, Burgomaster. Even mercury does not cure. It only abates the symptoms. Withhold it or administer guayac in its place, and those nine patients will soon be back in your hospice, dying. Farewell, Paracelsus. Please take the money. You have earned it. That should do it, Operinus. Three shipments of books to Augsburg, Leipzig, Strasbourg. We must be going. We're being observed. The master of the medical guild is approaching. Let him approach. I'm ready for him. Leaving the city so soon, Parasolskis? Yes, Guildmaster. I'm going to take the waters at Baden Baden. Oh, splendid. It must have been quite a shock for you, the banning of your publications by edict yesterday. The censor was severe, and you have so much to say. Yes, very shocked indeed, Guildmaster. But then we doctors are experts at treating for shock. Look, I have here horses laden with shocks for every doctor in Germany. I even have shocks for you both. My latest publication. I have beaten the censor. You will find it in the bookshops tomorrow. You'll also find a description of both of you in it. This is outrageous. It's against the law. The censor for these. Now who's shocked? Our doctors in their fine clothes and medical guilds must learn the truths of nature. When will they understand that our minds and our bodies are one and the same? The strong and meditating mind can banish sickness and plague from its body parts. Faith and cheerfulness are our shield against contagion, not the messes and poisons dished out by apothecaries. The herbs and essences of nature throng with the gifts of healing. 
Man is a star in miniature, and like a star, his energies come from within. My words will not die with me. They will ring through the valleys and down the ages. The young doctors of tomorrow will heed them, not the worn-out utterances of Galen and Avicenna. No one can stop the spread of the new medicine. I go to the hills to write my greater surgery. <laughs>